quickie stitchy tube. Hey everybody, it's Teresa and it is Wednesday the 29th of January and I'm starting these new videos and I'm calling them quickie stitchy tubes because I want to have a shorter format that I can come and just check in when I don't have a lot of extra time. So like right now I'm spending a lot of my time getting ready for market which is fun but I don't really have all day to shoot a video for you guys. You'll notice not as much makeup on, didn't vacuum the carpet, may have lettuce stuck in my teeth. I'm not really sure. Hi peaches. So this is just going to be just a briefer version of, of my stitchy tube videos, just not quite as, you know, regimented and organized with all the sections that I normally would do. And so it doesn't mean I love you guys any less. It just means I'm saying hello and then I have other things I have to do today. Thank you so much for all the thumbs downs last video. I really appreciate it. Can't imagine, could never imagine that I, a girl could ever dream to get 1200 thumbs downs on a floss tube video. There were a number of people that said, what are you doing? Like, why, why do you want thumbs downs? I really just wanted to take the sting out of them. They don't matter. And maybe secretly, I was hoping to make some kind of floss tube record. Somebody said like, oh, you probably have the most thumbs down on YouTube, which is not true. The number one video with thumbs downs was actually put out by YouTube, I want to say last year, and I haven't watched it. I think people were just unhappy with the content of it and the changes YouTube was making, but it has 16 million, 16 million thumbs downs. So I've got a ways to go. A girl can dream. I just want those of you who make videos to just not worry about it. Like it's not, it doesn't matter. From now on, when I get a thumbs down, I'm just going to say, Ooh, that must be another one of my super thumbs ups. So you can give them if you want to. I'm not going to make you. People were like, Oh, my hand was shaking. Some of you said, Ooh, it felt like a guilty pleasure to click the thumbs down. And others of you worried that maybe by clicking a thumbs down, that maybe you weren't going to get suggested the videos you wanted to see. You've only given one. If you want to go back and take it back, you certainly can. But one thumbs down, it's not going to hurt me. Didn't hurt you. Doesn't matter. Okay, I wanted to talk briefly about some sampler patterns that I bought last time from an Etsy store. And you can watch my previous Stitchy Tube, I believe number 39, if you want to learn more about it. I had found and had been asked about some reproduction samplers that were showing up on Etsy. They, I mean, they were brand new. And I didn't necessarily know about a lot about them last time. So I bought one and then I bought another one, their downloads. And then I started looking and some other people started looking. And what we discovered was that she was, without permission, using photographs of antique samplers from museum collections and antiquesamplers.org, which is put out by a private group. And um, two of the designs were charts that had already been released by people who reproduce samplers. And so, and it was unclear with those if she had used the charts to make her own chart. After people started asking her about them, she started changing the colors of the chart and flipping flipping motifs. I had contacted the shop and said, hey, look, I'm not comfortable owning these. Can I get a refund? And she said, yes. And uh, I announced it on Instagram. And most everybody was like, oh, shoot, that's too bad. Or it's too bad people are, you know, that way. And a couple of people said like, hey, what you did wasn't cool. I kind of stand by my decision. And I appreciate people being honest, but, um, after talking to, I talked to three lawyers last week, two of them extensively. One of them is an intellectual property lawyer and one of them is a copyright lawyer. Hi guys. And thank you for, <laughs> thank you for teaching me. Antique samplers are not necessarily uh, protected by copyright laws. It's why you can see pictures of the Mona Lisa on t-shirts and mugs and mouse pads and everything like that. Or, you know, Vincent van Gogh, Starry Night gets used a lot. He died more than 70 years ago, and so his works don't belong to him anymore if the copyright time has run out. And so these antique samplers are even older than Van Gogh's paintings. So the samplers themselves are not necessarily protected by copyright law. However, these websites that choose to put photographs up for our benefit, our learning, you know, there are, I love looking at museum sites and looking at old works of art. I think it's wonderful what antiquesamplers.org has done in giving us a resource to see all of these beautiful samplers that we never otherwise would see. They belong in private collections. And so it's very kind, generous, and just wonderful that, that they've taken the time to put these pages together and, and put information on and multiple photographs. 
And then the websites have, you know, especially antiquesamplers.org says, expressly says, please do not use these to create sampler graphs, which is an okay thing to ask, I believe. And the problem with using, you can't use the photographs. The photographs are protected by copyright. This, the Etsy shop started after people started kind of researching, started taking the names off of the names of the samplers and then started blurring the names and the dates on the actual photographs of the samplers, I think because she knew what she was doing wasn't cool. And so even though charting an unprotected piece of art from a long time ago may not technically be illegal, the lawyers that I talked to said it's kind of not you know, it's bad juju, one of them said. And I think the other one used the word icky, which is which is fair. And so somebody, a, another floss tuber, and I won't tell you who, but the example that I gave her was, th because she had questions about it, was that if at work you put out a bowl of M&Ms, let's say, on the edge of your desk, the... The idea is that help yourself to some M&Ms. Here's some M&Ms, help yourself to a few. If somebody came along and dumped all of them in their purse, is it illegal? No. Is it kind of rude and not, you know, polite social behavior? Yes. And so we don't want there to be a chilling effect. We don't want antiquesamplers.org to get so frustrated with people using her her photographs in a way she she doesn't want them to she could just say one day you know what I'm pulling it down I'm tired of this and that would be totally fair so I guess we should all behave in such a way that it makes things happy and, and easy for everybody else and that we protect the people who are giving us something of themselves I hope that makes sense I don't regret how I handled it I will say Instagram is a tricky way to explain a long story like that but I wanted, I felt like time was of the essence because I knew people were looking at these patterns and I think she did sell quite a few in between my initial video and when she started, she started pulling them down. I think they're off the website now. I think she's just pulled them down entirely. I think a lawyer got involved, to be honest. Okay, so I'm gonna mention Caracaras. Have you heard about Caracaras? I was talking to my friend Jen this week about the grocery store because she is so organized. She has these apps and she like orders her groceries and then she just pulls up to the store and they bring them out to her car and she pushes some buttons and it's done, like super cool. And I don't know, I mean, I've thought about it, but I really like looking at the grocery store because you never know what you're gonna find. Sometimes you find crazy things. And like I've said in a past video, it's fun to find food items that you're like, what in the world? Like I, the other day they had donut, you know, donuts, Hostess donuts, they're donuts. They have a cereal now that's donuts. They have um, banana cream frosted flakes. I don't buy them. I just think it's kind of funny and interesting to see. But I saw these fruits called caracaras. I initially thought they were mandarin oranges, which I also like. So I brought them home and I was like, oh, these are called caracaras. I don't know what these are. If you see them, I would recommend that you buy them. They are delicious, and they, they may be a kind of a limited time thing. I don't know if it's something that is available year-round. I don't think so. I've never noticed them before. But they're up small, like a small orange. They look like a small orange. And the fruit inside looks more like grapefruit color, like kind of pinkish and darker. And I would say, if I was going to describe the flavor, my mouth is watering. <laughs> they're really good. It's like if oranges were white meat, a caracara would be dark meat. Like it's a little sweeter, a little deeper. Harrison said they taste less bright. They're delicious. And I just cut them up and eat. I mean, I'll sit down and eat two of them because they're, they're, like I said, not very big. They're really delicious. So if you see them, give them a try. I highly recommend them. I'm super loving my model stitchers. I love you guys. <laughs> they're doing a great job. And... Why have I not been using model stitchers? I've had friends help me and I so, so appreciate that. But I've, I've always been nervous about making the jump into having model stitchers. You know, people that maybe I don't know really well. And it's not that I don't trust people, it's just that I'm a control freak sometimes. <laughs> not really, but it's just, 
I don't know. There's something about like just containing it, you know, but they're doing a great job. I can design and reproduce samplers faster than I can stitch them. I'm not saying that I'm trying to do like a bad job. I'm just saying it's way faster to chart something than it is to stitch it. Stitching takes longer, right? And so, like I said last video, to, this year is divide and conquer. And so I'm really just gonna start leaning on my friends and my, my model stitcher friends. And we'll just, you know, create some designs for you guys. So I'm very excited about that and keep going guys. You're doing a good job. I started taking anti-inflammatory medication of like a week and a half ago and I'm feeling a lot better. And it just kind of re-illustrates to me that sometimes when it's your health, you have to keep pushing forward. And I got a little frustrated. You know, last week I, I, I noticed with really within three days of starting to take that medication, I started to feel a lot better. And then there was a day last week where I was just, every hour had to go to the bathroom. And I think I was shedding water weight. And between one day and the next day, I was down three pounds. So I'm assuming my body was clinging on to a bunch of fluid with all that inflammation. And so to get back to my idea, I think sometimes with your health, you need to keep pushing for answers because you just do. You're, you're your own advocate. And I, I think, I can't tell you how many doctors I've been to to try to get some answers about why I don't feel good all the time. And finally, like doctor number eight or so, I'm, fi I'm finally getting some help. So if you're having trouble with your health, stick up for yourself. You deserve it. I got a little bit of stash, a little bit of stash this week. Um, one of them is this, and I'll hold it closer here. So this is by uh, Saju, and it's a reproduction of part of the Bayou Tapestry, which is in France. Um, it's a beautiful piece of old piece of art. It celebrates, celebrates and chronicles the Battle of Hastings, 1066 with King Harold. And it is an amazing work of art. It's not technically a tapestry. It's called the tapestry, but it's actually embroidery. And it's in very good condition. And you can actually see the entire thing in France. It's like 150 feet long or something crazy like that. And it's horses and men and they're shooting bows and arrows and they're getting chopped into pieces and they're landing on shores. And it's this just chronicle of this battle. And it's so amazing as not only a historical piece, but I can't imagine the number of hours that went into making it. And I've always liked it. I've got a couple of books on it and I really need to, now that I have this chart, I need to read one of my books and really dig in and get to know about the, the tapestry itself. But I was, so I was excited about that. I will put a link below to the Etsy shop that carries it. It is the Saju, I believe it's the Saju part of Etsy. And she has a lot of reproduction charts and reproduction like scissors and and tape measures and things like that so it's kind of a cool store okay i also got finally this book in the mail samplers oh yeah i gotta lean forward samplers of the pennsylvania germans and this book is not hard to find it's not super hard to find but there's not a lot of them usually, and they run you know, between 30 and $45, I think, when you find them. I saw it on eBay about a month and a couple weeks ago, and I was like, you know what? I just need to grab that before somebody says something somewhere, and then everybody wants it, and I can't get one, because I've kind of wanted this one for a while. I love this style of sampler. I think they're so beautiful. And so I ordered it. It was a buy it now. And I ordered it from a very nice man and we had some conversations back and forth about samplers. And then, you know, kind of some time went by and I figured that he was sending a book rate, which is fine. And so I just waited and waited and waited. And then I was like, I kind of hadn't heard from him, but I also saw on eBay that it wasn't listed that it had shipped yet. So then I started worrying that something happened to him. And I, I reached out to him and he replied, but he replied on eBay and I didn't even think to check my eBay messages. And then I emailed him again and he said, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. And he, he emailed me back. Well, it turns out he was like, oh my gosh, I can't believe it's taken this long. I mailed it on such and such a day, like a long, long time ago. He said, I'm just going to refund you your money. And I said, no, no, I really would like the book. So I said, I'm willing to wait another month. You know, maybe w one of my neighbors got it or whatever. It's stuck in the post office somewhere. So I said, I'm, I'm willing to wait if you're willing. And an hour later, it showed up, <laughs> which is, I find is almost always the way. Once you start asking about something, it's like, oh, there it is. Never mind. 
So I was excited to get that book and that was a little bit of stash. Okay. Uh, I'm having a sale this weekend, Friday through Monday. And it's something that I think I'm going to do. We're going to see how it goes. A lot of you say like, oh, it's my dream to have a needlework store. It would be so much fun. And I thought, how can I give some people that I know, like just the feeling of having your own store? And so I contacted my friend, Carol, the salt box stitcher, and I'll put a link to her channel below. And I said, how would you like to create a sale on my website? And she was like, well, what do you mean? And we had to have, go back and forth. It took you know a minute for me to explain it. Essentially, I said, you can pick out like 40-ish things on my site that you think should be on sale. Things that if you were shopping, you might like, or just things that you, you think other people would like. And so there really were no stipulations. I did have, I did tell her I may veto some if I know it's going to be hard for me to get more or if it's going to take a long time for me to get some. But she did a really good job and she picked out a list. And so Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday, there's going to be a sale on my site. There'll be a link up at the top that says Carol's Sale. And um, you can just click on it and see what she thought should be on sale for the weekend. And she thought it seemed like kind of fun and she had a good time and she wrote out her list by hand and then just snapped pictures of her her handwritten lists and uh, I just think the world of Carol she's such a great stitcher and a great lady she's so funny and very kind and giving and I just really enjoy watching her videos but I've enjoyed getting to know her uh, as well and so Carol Saltbox Stitcher Sale is this weekend. I also have pre-orders available right now for some of the Hands Across the Sea samplers I'll flash a picture here of one of them. I'm trying to do as low editing as possible. But Nicola has four new samplers that are beautiful, as always. And because she comes from overseas to market, she can't necessarily carry a whole bunch of charts with her. Paper is very heavy. And so anytime I ship to my distributors, I'm like, oh, I forgot how, you know, it's so heavy to ship these packages. So she, you know, asked if people could if they you know if they knew what they wanted if they could just let her know sometime uh, before the end of the first week of February is what she told me what they needed and then she would just ship them right before she left and then that way it saves her having to to carry them and it's just easier for her and so they'll be sitting here waiting for me when I get back from market so I have a whole bunch of hands across the sea samplers up now. I had wanted to add her to my site this year anyway, so it was a perfect opportunity. And this way I know exactly what you guys are looking for and how many to order. It's always a guessing game. And when, with the overseas orders, it's tricky. You know, like, do oh, I don't want to order too few. I don't want to order too many. And so you've got until the end of that first full week. So I think it's like February 8th is when I need to know by if you want to pre-order any. And the way that I've set it up is, you pay one dollar to pre-order it and then I subtract that when your chart comes in and so it's just a way for you to hold your spot when you pay to pre-order you get a little download with just how this is gonna work you can add to that order if you want to place an order now and include several pre-orders with it I can hold the whole thing together so you only pay shipping once but I have a little marking sampler that I designed with a dachshund on the bottom and it says be brave which is one of my favorite little two-word sentences and you get that for free on that sheet that you get explaining how the, the club works. And so I hope you enjoy that. That is the, that's the only pre-ordering that I'm going to really do. A couple of people have asked, are you going to get this? Are you going to get this? Because designers are starting to tip their hat and, and kind of show some of the things that will be there. It's tricky for me as a designer and shop owner to shop at market because I typically can't get out of the booth until, the, until Sunday. And by then, sometimes things are sold out and I can still get them, but it might be a week wait or it might be a couple of weeks a wait. And so I don't want to promise anybody anything that I, you know, I'm, yes, I'll get that for you because I, I don't know. Uh, I think there are sh shops online that are doing pre-orders. And so I, it doesn't hurt my feelings. You shop where you want to shop. But I just wanted to let you guys know that pre-orders, only thing is the hands across the sea samplers. I also added a bunch of 36 count linen to my site this week. It's, you know, you think you know your business, right? And I'm sure you guys have days like this where you go to work and you think you know what's going on and what you're doing. I was getting ready to place an order with Yarn Tree and that's where I get a lot of my linen. And I was like, gosh, it seems like I never, am I, 
low on any 36 count linen, just like regular linen, not hand dyed. And I, I was thinking, gosh, I don't, I can't remember the last time I ordered 36 count linen. Well, it turns out never. <laughs> I never added any 36 count. So I got a bunch of 36 count regular linen in you guys. It's up. I got some cool colors in. I am working on my Kickstarter sampler and I'm rounding the corner and oh, you can see it right over my shoulder. I'm working on the verse now over one. It's really fun. I'm having a good time working on it and having model stitchers is allowing me to really focus on this to get it done. And I'm expecting to be done in two weeks time if all goes well, if I don't sprain a wrist or something. It's been really fun to get to know Louisa through stitching her sampler. She must have been quite a girl. It is a large sampler. It's just under 300 stitches across and 499 stitches tall. So it's big. It's beautiful. She did a great job. There have been a good number of, I call them executive decisions. When you're reproducing a sampler, you want it to be fun to stitch, right? So some of the things, do you wanna, do you wanna chart every single like, oh, she was at one thread off this way and one thread off that way? Well, pretty soon you're having to split stitches and have lots of instructions. And I know some designers try to do that. I do leave in as many mistakes as I can and stay true to her mistakes. But there are times where it's like, oh, she caught not enough threads this time and too many threads this time. And so you're making hundreds of little decisions and so it's been fun. There will come with the chart pages of instructions and uh, just my thoughts about reproducing it because I feel like I always learn something about the girl when she does it. I don't wanna show it yet because I wanna be able to reveal it when it's done. If you supported my Kickstarter campaign, first of all, thank you. I did update my page today with instructions on what you can do next. But if you want, you can just email me below. I'm gonna need your address so I know where to send your goodies. And I'm excited to be, to kind of close this chapter and also just to get it done. I think it's just so neat to, I think about her, Louisa, when I'm stitching the sampler and how much her family must have meant to her to stitch a sampler that focused so much on her family and um, the death of her little brother. And it's, she did a great job. She must have been quite a girl because it is, like I said, very big and um, her stitches are much tinier than mine are. I'm stitching over one on 40 count these, this verse which is challenging, but she did it on like 55 count, which is crazy. <laughs> so we, I just I just like to think about Louisa and, and what she must have been thinking about while she took on this enormous project. Good for her. I had one lonely person notice that my stitching light was missing, my stitching lamp, right? I've talked about it before. I got it from Amazon. A lot of you have asked about it. I like it a lot. You can set it warm or cool. You can go up or down. It does not get hot. And so it um, it's nice to work under for a long time. It's fine. I don't, it's not like I get hot and sweaty. I took it to the Galleria show. And I don't remember if I bumped it, dropped it, put it in the van and it fell, or I don't remember how. But that where the joint is, see the... The, the little panel for controlling it there joins the bendy part and the pole part. And that cracked. Like the, the screws that were inside were held in there with plastic and they cracked and then it just kind of always wanted to lean. And I was like, eh, it's okay, it can lean. Well, working on things for market, I was carrying it back and forth so I could see what I was doing here at the desk. And um, I took it back over there to stitch one night a couple weeks ago and plugged it in, tried to turn it on and nothing happened. So I took the plug out and put it back in and nothing happened. And I took the plug out, put it back in the, a different hole, still it wouldn't turn on. So I, I grabbed it to like move it and pull it back and I just pulled the entire top part off. And there were two little wires in there that were just stripped and there really was no way to fix it. I completely snapped my light in half. So if you buy this light, please be aware that it has feelings and gentle ones at that. And I don't think it's really one that's meant to be a traveling light for shows and things. And so uh, if you're gonna pick it up, pick it up by the metal part and not by the bendy part. 
I got a new one. That's how much I like it. I just, I was a little bit like, oh crap. And I was like, oh, I'll just try to use, no, I gotta have a light. So I bought another one. It's wonderful. Okay, and the last thing I wanna talk about is Marie Kondo. And you know, it's funny because we just were talking about organization last time. Maybe I was talking about, oh, I was talking about it because my friend Sue showed her underwear drawer, um, Susie Reno on her last video talking about Marie Kondo and her show. It's on Netflix and I've heard about it and she's been in the news and we used to sell the book at Books A Million and Barnes and Noble and people really liked it. I'm slow to jump on any bandwagon. And so I was like, mm, that's probably, I mean, if everybody likes it, it can't be good. That's usually, <laughs> that's usually what I think. So yesterday or the day before I was working on, um, Louisa Sampler, and I was like, you know what, I'm going to just watch Marie and see what the fuss is all about. It's kind of cool, actually. And just her basic idea is just kind of the whole idea of paring down, which I've talked about before, and getting rid of things that are unnecessary. Her philosophy, which I really like, is she wants you to only hold on to things that spark joy, which is a tricky concept when you're thinking about things like vacuums, I guess, or you know, paper towels, I don't know, like things that you have. But I get I get her point. And so she doesn't think you should get rid of anything just because it's like even broken or outdated or doesn't fit. You know, like there was a, a gal on one of the videos that there was a dress that her grandmother bought her and she really didn't want to get rid of it because it made her think of her grandmother. And Marie was like, do you want to keep it? Does it spark joy? And she said, yeah, it makes me think of my grandma. So she kept it, which I think is cool. And um, she has all these crazy, cool folding techniques and things. So I actually sorted out my sock drawer yesterday and got rid of more socks and then folded them her way. And it's really cool. And all of a sudden I have all this room and I can see all my socks. So I don't have time to do my whole house now, but I think in bits and pieces, I may work on the Marie method. And then when you decide to get rid of something, she has you say thank you to it for the time that you had it, you know? And so maybe we all, last time you guys all said, everybody said I gotta work on my craft room, but garages too, people said, oh, our garage is so bad or our attic is bad. I think, you know, people say, well, why do you have 200 cross-stitch charts? Are you ever going to find the time to make those 200 pieces? Does the chart spark joy is what Marie would say. And so if it does, why wouldn't you be able to keep it? food for thought. So anyway, that's, I think that's all I've got for today. Short video. I hope you like this format. I guess let me know what you think if you'd like to see me do more of these or if you're like, Therese, we only like to see you when you're all made up and you got your stuff together. I don't think that's probably true, but I really appreciate you guys and your support. You're a wonderful audience. I, I don't talk about a lot of milestones. I guess in the last couple of days without my noticing it, I crossed the 5,000 subscriber mark. I'm at 50-50, or I was at 50-50 earlier. And so Harrison calls me a micro celebrity now. I don't know. I mean, I guess I just consider you guys my, my, my group of 5,050 friends. And I, I think it's cool that you guys wanna just listen to me blabber and watch my cats. Maybe you're just here for the cats, right Fitz? You're just here for fits and zero. I hope you guys have a great week and that you enjoyed the video and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.